Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, in today's video, we're going to give you the 18 most common packing mistakes to avoid on your very first Carnival Cruise list. And we want you to get on board, but not only get on board, but we want you to be comfortable knowing what to pack, knowing what to leave at home. You ready for it? Let's go. First mistake to avoid is not finding the right balance between what to pack, what to leave at home, what the weather is going to be, what the weather is like from where you are from. Listen, we always approach our cruises with a, we're going to pack for what we are already dealing with. And right. we're going to pack for, for instance, if we're going to the Caribbean, we're going to go out there on weather.com, weather see what the projected weather is going to be and prepare for that. Because you do have to realize that as you are traveling, most of the time you are traveling into warmth. And then on your way back, you are traveling back into normalcy. So strike that balance between making sure that you're um, packing for both. Also, make sure that you're packing for daytime weather yep, and, and nighttime, nighttime weather. weather. Because on the open sea, it is totally different. Yes. So pack accordingly. And one of the, the number one things that we use to avoid underpacking and, and overpacking is having uh, counting the number of days that is of the sailing and deciding how many days <laughs> that we're going to change clothes. So for the queen, she normally take enough to change three times a day, Uh huh. three times a day. I normally take enough to change two times a day. So with that being said, if you want a five day sailing. For me, it'll be 10 outfits. For her, it'll be 15. So that's a way so you won't underpack or overpack. But you're still probably going to overpack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The second packing mistake you want to avoid is not using a packing list. Let me tell you how important <laughs> this is. Just last year, the queen decided I knew that it was coming. I was going to. I'm, I'm, I'm so good at packing now because we done been on so many cruises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got real cocky, y'all. Got real cocky. And she left so many different items. I can't remember all the items that she I left. I left chargers. Yeah. Socks. I think it was. I think yeah. It, I left yeah. deodorant. Yeah. Thankfully, I could use my husband. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> so make sure you use a packing list. A packing list will also keep you from underpacking and overpacking. And most important, it'll help you not forget something. Mm -hmm. And one of the famous things that the fellas forget is either our dress shoes for belt. elegant night or our belt. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> yep. Never see So at belt. least if the belt is on your packing list, bro, you be able to make sure you don't forget it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we actually have a packing list over on our cruise essentials page on our website. Yes, we do. So that's going to be linked down in the description. Feel free to use the packing list. You can update it, change it, do what you will. But I would feel like that's a good start. It's a game changer. It's a good start for you. All right. The next mistake to avoid is not traveling with a travel size luggage scale. I yeah. know a lot of people will be like, we don't need that. I can kind of guesstimate. You're not going to guesstimate correctly. Trust no, no, me. Uh -uh. Now, let's talk about the cruise line. Cruise line does recommend that you keep your luggage under 50 pounds. But I'll be honest. They don't weigh your stuff when you're putting yeah. your luggage onto a cruise ship. They don't. But I think they put that as a rule because they know that most people fly in. And most airlines have a 50 pound rule. So if you start off at 50, then there's not going to be any problems across the board. Right. So the reason we say bring your luggage scale is if you are, well, if you're flying in or driving into port or and you have to maybe fly out. We want to make sure that you're not going to be paying extra baggage fees. Right. Because now after you've been on your cruise and you've soiled your clothes they weigh more. They weigh more. If you decided to swim the day before and it's your stuff is not completely dry when you put it back in your luggage, it weighs more now. Yep. So make sure, because we've had to do a shimmy shimmy and a redistribute some weight, some stuff into other bags, uh -huh. because paying for overweight luggage is not it's fun. not worth it. yeah not fun <laughs> and it's and it's not worth it <laughs> it's not worth it so travel with your own luggage scale we have one linked into our cruise essential store yep. that you can pay for they're under 10 bucks they're about this big 
Yeah. It's going to yeah, save you, yeah, yeah, you hundreds of dollars. Yeah, because you want to be like us uh, on one of our Jamaica trips. We we in the airport with our bags all strung out, throwing stuff in the trash can so we can get under that 50 pounds and we had to pay yeah. that extra $100. Because when you're under that amount of stress, <laughs> yeah. everything can go. Like I don't even need it yeah. anymore. <laughs> it's like, wow, yeah. I don't it need it. It was so embarrassing, though. It was it embarrassing, though. It was three pounds. You know, all my draws and stuff was out <laughs> in the middle of everybody. <laughs> Because I'm going to be under that 50 pounds. I'm going to be under that 50 pounds. So, yeah. So, the luggage skill has been a game changer. So, we able to wear it before we get there. So, we ain't got to do that. Exactly. All right. The fifth mistake that you want to avoid, and a lot of people make this mistake. They sure do. It's not putting your essential documents inside of your carry-on. And when I say carry-on, I'm talking about whether it's the backpack or a rolling bag that you get. Tote that, bag. That you're going to take on the cruise with you. Make sure that you have your boarding pass in there. Make sure that you have your driver's license. Make sure you have your passport in birth that bag. Certificate. Your birth certificate. Also, this is a bonus. If you plan on wanting to swim, when you get on board, have your swim stuff in there because your bags is going to go up underneath the ship and you're not going to get them to around For about 1.30 or later. All depends on how soon they can get them bags to your room. So make sure you put those essentials. I think we mentioned medicine, didn't we? No, we didn't. Uh, make sure you put your medicine in your carry-on. So anything that you know that you're going to need when you get on board before you can get your bags that's going to come yep. to your room, put it make your sure you on. put that in your carry-on. Uh, if you got a CPAP machine. You carry got it. to wear it. You if, got to bring that on. Yes. If you got your distilled water. Bring that on. Your wine. Yeah, your champagne, wine. All that. Make sure that's it. Don't make no beverages, mistakes. beverages. Carton beverages. Because uh, we was on a celebration. No last, alcohol, though. Yes. We was on a celebration last well, year. Well, hard liquor. And the gentleman took and put his wine. Is it was his wine or his sodas was in his checked luggage. And they took it. They took it. They put a, they put a nice little letter in there letting you know that they took it. And basically, There's nothing you can do about yeah, it. Nothing you can do about it because you're supposed to carry that on. Yeah, so, so that it can be examined before you get on the ship. Right. So please don't make that mistake. Nope. The next thing to avoid doing on your carnival cruise, and I'm laughing because I've got it, <laughs> is failing to pack according to the excursion you yeah, are going on. Man. <laughs> in port. <laughs> yes. What do I mean by that? Uh huh. Break so, it down. If you were deciding, I'm going to go ATV in, yeah. don't wear white. <laughs> and don't forget that although the shore, I mean, the, yeah, the shore excursion people, they come prepared to sell you a whole lot of stuff that you have forgotten to bring along with you or pre-purchase or whatnot. But you have to remember what they are going to supply to you at a premium price are going to be the bottom of the barrel of quality. Yeah. What I mean is if you're on an ATV excursion, you're going to need some kind of protective goggles. Yeah. Even if it's not a muddy day, it's going to be a dusty day. And yeah. I promise you, if there is a, a dot point point zero 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 ninth of a millimeter of space between <laughs> this and this, dust is going to get, get in, in your there. eyes. Yep. And baby, <laughs> make sure that you are preparing yourself for excursions like that. Because the glasses that they gave me basically just covered right here. <laughs> yeah. And all the dust all the was dust coming down coming <laughs> and coming up. On it's like, God, no, baby, I can't see. Yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, face shields that you put in front of your face, they're going to sell you a 50 cent Dollar Tree bandana. Yeah. Well, not Dollar Tree, Dollar um, dollar General bandana. You want something that's going to really keep the dust out of your mouth and out of your nose. Pay for something. Get something delivered from Amazon that's going to be of quality that's going to prepare you for that excursion. If you're going to go swimming... Yeah. Don't forget that most of these places you have to read your ticket when you pay for your excursion. Some of them don't provide towels. Right. You may have to bring your towel from the ship onto the excursion. Make sure sunscreen that you're actually bringing a change of clothing so that you can change it to something dry when you're getting bus back to the ship. All right. The seventh packing mistake that you want to avoid 
is not being prepared for the rain. Uh, we actually ran into this situation on our okay. first cruise on the Carnival Glory. And speaking of, if you have not heard our <laughs> first time cruise of horror story, you want to definitely check that out. We'll link, link that, that below. down in the description. <laughs> Uh, so you can check that out. So on that particular cruise, we came to sail away, thought we were going to have a good time. Mm -mm. And this biggest rainstorm ever came out of no way. And back then, nowhere, out of nowhere, um, back then on the Count of a Glory, I'm not sure if it's still on. They haven't been on the ship since then. That they had the things, the canopy things that they could put. They could put. They ain't do nothing. <laughs> By the time it moved like this, everybody was wet. Yeah. Everybody. So please make sure you have yourself a poncho or some Umbrella. type of umbrellas, any type of rain gear to protect you because. Over in the Caribbean, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you make it out of there without a quick downpour, you're you lucky. Blessed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The next mistake to avoid is not preparing for elegant night. Some yeah. people keep forgetting that on particular sailings, there is more than one. So on a cruise of one to five days, you're going to have at least one elegant night. Once you get to the sixth day and above, you're going to have at least two of them. So right. I think most of us are are conditioned for the one. It is that second one yeah, that, gets <laughs> that <you>. usually <laughs> sneaks up on people. So make sure that you are preparing accordingly for that. Do you have to ball gown it, tuxedo it up? No. But they do ask that you get a little snazzy, look a little differently than you do from your everyday, day-to-day -day life. And it's a good opportunity, especially if you're traveling with people that you don't usually travel with. Or even if you're traveling with your boo thing and y'all been traveling forever, it's a great time to actually get some updated pictures. Yep. Get that out the way. Get dressed up. Treat it like a like a date night. Do a specialty dining. You know, right. I'm just adding on to it now because I'm trying to make y'all look a little good. Because some people like to avoid the elegant night. And that's yeah. okay, especially if you cruise a thousand times. Right. But at least know that it is available and prepare for it if you want to. All right. The knife mistake you want to avoid is packing. And just like with the rain, is making sure that you bring yourself a light sweater or a light jacket. Mm -hmm. um, I do that anyway, and the anyway. queen do that anyway. We do that for the planes because for some reason, <laughs> they make them pl them planes feel like a sub-zero refrigerator. You ain't lying. <laughs> It'd be cold up on there, man. So we make sure that we always have a light jacket because mm -hmm. the thing about being out there on the sea, especially at, at night, night, it can even though it, it can be 100 degrees, during the day and you sweating and at nighttime it's you, cool you, it's cool so you want to make sure that you be prepared for that uh, especially if you're cruising after the summer so uh summertime you kind of can get away with it a little bit sometimes yeah but anything we we say beyond September on, most of the time you're gonna need a light jacket out there or a sweater because uh -huh. it do get chilly or some jogging pants yeah or stretch pants or something something yeah. that you're able to cover up and, and layer up a little bit yeah so be sure to bring that even and i said about the summer just even the summer still have it because like the queen said it's better to have, not have it and not need it and not need it than to, to need, need it and, and not have it. it all right 10th thing to avoid is not putting out a debarkation outfit oh man so the night before <laughs> debarking the ship you have the option of taking your own luggage down with you yep. or sitting it outside and you pick your luggage up as you make your way through and starting to get off the ship but if you send your luggage down you better make sure that you have something to put on that next day there has been countless stories of people <laughs> packing every single thing and once that suitcase is gone you can't get it back right. and they have nothing I read a story on Facebook in one of the cruise groups, and I thought it was the funniest but the most sincere gesture of of being a stranger and helping somebody out that I've heard in a long time. This lady packed all her stuff, left out her night pajamas. Some people don't do that, but she left out her night pajamas. <laughs> and then the next morning, realized she had nothing to wear. Ooh. 
No, 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 no. She changed into her night pajamas and put the luggage out. Yeah. <laughs> so she had nothing to wear the next morning. Her husband had to go up and down the halls asking random strangers, I have this amount of money. Do you have a pair of shorts and a shirt that you can sell me? That you can sell me that size <laughs> such and such. And somebody helped this lady out and sold the husband an outfit for her to be able to get off the ship because otherwise she would have had to walk off there with her night pajamas on. Make sure you put an outfit yeah, we, out. We don't want you to be that person. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure your little your your miniature toiletry bag is out because we're gonna need you to brush your teeth, wash your face, look human while you're on your way home. All right. The eleventh packing mistake that we see that first time cruisers make is not bringing a first aid kit. Mm. You want to be sure you do that because if you have to go to the the cruises or carnivals um, medic. <laughs> A Band-Aid can cost you an arm and a leg. I don't know the exact cost, but it don't matter. But at the end of the day, it's going to cost you more than it costs you at the CVS. Uh -huh. <laughs> so make sure you bring that because you never know if you're going to get a cut. Uh, we was on a cruise one time and uh, what did we cut? No, I cut, my, I cut myself on the bed. He was trying to be fancy. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, my Band-Aid's inside of my kit did not work so i had to still end up getting some from the from the medic yeah. but i'm so glad i did ha have some yeah because it, it held us over <laughs> yeah it held us over. Yeah. he had gashed himself bad real real bad so make sure you have that first aid kit mm -hmm. um with you with your neosporin your band-aids mm -hmm. your your bandage your um bandage wraps all that good stuff a couple of pain med pills yeah. i'm talking to Tyler. i ain't talking about nothing serious now yeah and Tylenol, then, ibuprofen and then again we do have a recommended first aid kit that we have linked in our cruise essential store that's linked absolutely. in the description absolutely the 12th mistake to avoid is not securing the things in your bag that can leak. We're talking about toothpaste. If it's getting squeezed, it could squeeze all over your freaking clothes. Mouthwash. If you're tr like us and we travel with like like a little thing of alcohol because we like to sanitize with rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're putting all that kind of stuff in Ziploc bags because in any event that that stuff get burst in your bag... You got a problem on your hand. Yeah. We're talking about makeup, things like that. Even though you're putting it in your kit, still kind of use like plastic bags yeah. to secure those things. Yeah, lotions. Your lotions uh, because, shower gel. Yeah, because if that yeah. stuff get on your stuff, it can ruin yeah. your vacation. Like Yeah, been there. We done been there and done mm -hmm. that. What did we... What? Something. Lotion. I, I, lotion. Mouthwash. Yeah, mouthwash and done it. Lotion and done it to us. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And you in there trying to wash all that stuff out, it ain't no fun. Yes. Yeah. Not at all. The 13th packing mistake that first time was we see make is not bringing small bills for tipping. Mm -hmm. I know we used to, you know, having 50s and 100s. 20s. Um, but make sure you have some small bills for tipping because once you, the first person that you're going to run into is your porter. And that's the person that's going to be taking your bags and putting them on the ships. We always highly recommend you tipping them because they are Highly. hard workers. They are hard, <clears throat> especially when you bring in, excuse me, when you bring in your clothes, your bag, and it's more than 50 pounds. And you know and it is. And they huffing <laughs> all that stuff. And they do such a good job. And they have great attitudes. I have not met mm -mm. any of them on any cruise line that didn't have a great attitude. Well, that's because we tip well. <laughs> yeah, well, even then, I <laughs> well, still. Well, yeah, because they don't know what we're about to tip them. Yeah, so they, be, they have, so we do recommend tipping them. So having small bills will work for them. And mm -hmm. then also, once you get on the ship, if you got a bartender or a runner that's taking really good care of you, yeah. you can also slip them some cash as well. Yeah. And also, don't mean to me leave this part out, but when you're into your port of calls, Nassau, Jamaica, wherever you're going, sometimes having small bills will save you because if uh -huh. you're negotiating pricing or you're trying to tip somebody and they see that you have a 20, but you're only trying to tip them too, they may act like they don't have um, change to um, break you out yep. and give you your money back. That's a good one. So go Plenty ahead. people have been victim to that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and present the small bills that you want them to have so that you won't get got. All right. The 14th thing to avoid is 
Do not be bringing your um, unofficial banned items on the cruise. I'm talking about <laughs> handcuffs. I'm talking about things that could be... Hookah machines. Yeah, weapons. Yes. And sometimes weapons are things that you wouldn't think of, but they believe that handcuffs are weapons on board. Bondage weapons. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's other ways to get some things tied up. Y'all zip ties. Mm-hmm. No, you can't bring the zip ties, but oh, you, you, can't, you, can't but you can ties. bring some pantyhose. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh-huh. <laughs> go go to the Dollar Tree and get you some of them pantyhose. Go to the go to Walmart and get you some of them pantyhose in the egg. <laughs> they do uh, the same thing. Oh yeah, people ask her this one too. Do not bring no fishing rod. Be- listen. No, look. You can't fish off the side of the ship. Sometimes I be wonder, do people be playing? Yeah. <laughs> but it but is be a serious. question. But it be a yeah, question we I get. Think it be, yeah, you be serious. Oh my god, Cause candles! Remember last year, because you remember last year? Yeah, that year, did happen last, last year. Last year, a, a first timer. This was a first time cruiser was fishing off the side of the ship, and he got banned for, for life. life. Also, candles. I know some of us, like mm-hmm. myself, like to make your cabin feel homey, like if like your home. <laughs> But you can't do an open flame candle. So if you want to use a candle for light, if you're one of the people that have to sleep with light like I do, then get a battery operated one, but no open flame. But if you want something that's going to keep your room um, smelling good, you can bring like a diffuser or right. a Glade plug in. Um, that's what I do, a Glade plug in. Or if I'm lazy and I run out of my Glade plug in, then I have a whole lot of like room sprays that I will spray. Mm-hmm. And since the cabin is so small, you can spray that, close your, you know, close the room up, and it usually lasts a while. And before we move forward, the main one, can I bring my iron? No. No. And now y'all don't and got no fast steamers, in. And no steamers, no steamers either. Because <laughs> y'all don't got fast in that. Well, if I can't bring the iron, I will bring the steamer. steamer. Because I saw somebody on TikTok bring the steamer. They got lucky. Yeah. And got theirs on. Uh, and be sure to check the link below, and we're going to link a list to the list of carnival's banned items so you can have the complete Absolutely. list. Absolutely. Because we don't want you to, to get, get nothing com- confiscated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the 15 packing mistake you want to avoid, and listen to me clear because <laughs> we feel like this triad right here. Yes. If you mess this up right here, I feel like it's going to mess up your whole cruise. Oh, darn. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really do. You're passionate not, about that. Like, not having your lanyard first. I agree your, with that. Your lanyard is the what's going to hold your sign and sale card mm-hmm. around your neck. I can't imagine walking around with my sign and sale card in my pocket. Because anything in my pocket, I got a feeling I'm going to reach in there and, and, and reach for something else and pull my hand out and the card then flew out somewhere. What's going to happen to a lot of people. A lot of people. And people will take your card and go straight to the bar and, and rack up someone some drinks. So the lanyard number two will be your tumbler. I love the tumbler because now I can get in the water and I don't have to worry about the water getting into my drink because I got a cup on it and the next you got a thing, cup on it. Top I, I mean, I got a top on it. And so why we talking about the third thing will be your straw because them straws on carnival ships suck because they got them paper straws no, or them no. candy straws. I guess they have all candy now. Yeah, they all candy. Okay, yeah, I have, yeah. The, and I do not like them. No, and so. when they and when they start to melt. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> so we were introduced to these, I'm going to call it a telescope straw. That's what they call it, telescopic yeah, it straw. Is, it scrolls out like this. We have those linked over in our Cruise Essential store mm-hmm. as well. They are a game changer. Sixteenth thing to avoid is not packing some type of laundry bag. Yes. But you're going to have dirty clothes. You're going to have dirty clothes. Listen. We have some um, laundry bags that we recommend that we have linked into our Cruise Essential store. And listen, listen at me good because oh, y'all be having go. us out <laughs> in these streets looking bad. So we recommended these laundry bags and they are sling bags that you can, that has a strap that can go across your back. So at the end of the voyage, it's easy to tote them to the laundry room. Yeah. You see where I'm going with this? Don't take your freaking... Dirty laundry, sling it on your bag and walk off the ship like that. We have literally seen the bags we recommend. And yeah. we know, because when we see people with the stuff that we recommend, they usually have two, three items on at the same time that we recommend. Yeah. So we be like, them our people right there. We saw one guy getting off the ship in front of us with He's slung over his back, back. <laughs> laundry in the bag like he was going to the laundry mat. No, no, no. Put that dirty bag. 
in your luggage. luggage. <laughs> yes. Zip your luggage up. And and discreetly get off the cruise so that people don't <laughs> like me don't be judging you. All right, this mistake right here, the seventeen one, you definitely want to avoid this because we don't want you to burn down the ship, man. And now at least what I'm on it. Yeah, we don't want you to burn down the ship. So if you are bringing a uh, an extension cord, make sure it is a nine surge protected extension cord. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they will take it. Oh yeah, if they catch it, they take will it. take it. Now, in our mind, we first thing we're thinking that it's surge protected. Why wouldn't they want it to be surge protected? I don't have no answer for you. But that's what they say. That's what they say that when you have a surge protected one, that is a fire hazard on a ship. Mm-hmm. I would think that the it's one. The I would. I would <laughs> think that if you had the surge protection, it would stop. It that. would stop the fire. So I don't understand how it works. Yeah. But if you understand how it works, you can definitely put that down. I'm in the not comments. an electrician or an yeah. engineer. <laughs> I just gonna follow the rules. So again, we have some nine a nine surge protected power cords. Link that our cruise extension. So see, we got y'all. We got we'll you. We'll put it all in one place. Make sure y'all have everything you need to mm-hmm. bring to make sure your cruise is a success. Man. Absolutely. Yes. The 18th thing to <sighs> avoid on your very first Carnival cruise is not having a good carry-on bag. Yeah, man. Tote, backpack. Whatever it is that you choose to use as your carry-on, because trust me, you're going to need something. Yes. Make sure that it's something that, one, fits your personality, fits your style, and is functional for you to be able to get on board, be comfortable until you can get into your cabin and get offloaded. For me, because I do work from cruise ships, because as a travel agent, you really don't have days off when you have people at sea. So I always travel with my MacBook. I always travel with an extended screen that I can use, keyboards, mouse, things like that. So I travel with a... It's actually called a nursing, no, a a messenger nursing bag, but it looks like a backpack. Right. Very nice, very cute. And every time someone sees it in a video, yeah, matter of fact, we'll everybody it. asks for it. Matter of <laughs> fact, we're gonna show it to you we're right sh- here, right here. Dang! So every time I people peep this bag in yeah. our vlogs, I legit have so many. Where did you get it? Where did you get it? So much so that the company sold out of these bags for a very long time. But the reason I love this bag is because it has a very wide opening. And when I say you can basically... So my laptop goes in here. My screen goes in here. These are documents that stay in this bag, which is my... um, my Geo Blue Medical, because I have an international medical plan that I play um, p- that we pay for because we travel internationally so much. Right. Um, also, my travel um, insurance because I do have a third party travel insurance that we pay for. I have documents of that in here. I, I didn't mean to do all this, but just yeah, <laughs> these are power cords. So phone chargers, all of this, all of this stuff goes into Ran that bag right there. My. A bag like this, and also what else goes into it? Perfect carry on. My medications, also passport, license, wallet, like everything goes in here, and this keeps everything that I need secure and on me until I'm able to get on a cruise ship. And guess what else goes in the side, y'all? Until we can get to our room. Yeah, man. My bottle of wine uh-huh. go right there. Yep. So, and then, you know, you got room for yeah. two. <laughs> Just play. It. But yes, get you something that's going to be functional for you to use until you can get into your cabin. And all right, fellas, I'm not going to leave y'all out. I got my my little bag as well. It's not a little bag. It's a good size carry-on bag. Um, and I still got stuff in here left over from... The previous cruise when we just got back off the Icon, which is plenty of room inside of here. Also, I but like, show them this because oh yeah, that's the that's my this excursions is bag. Backpack. Yeah, the excursions bag. So it's waterproof and it collapses back into a little pouch onto itself, but we can't find it. No, nah, it's not waterproof. Yes, it is. I don't think that's waterproof. It is. I bought it. Oh, okay. Well, I, I'm never put it in the water to see if it's proof. <laughs> He, look, he ain't buying it. I bought it. <laughs> yeah. But it is waterproof. And, and we've had that for probably about a, mm, 10 years. Yeah, we don't have that for a while. And uh, and then also I like that on the side of the bag, 
that if I hook up my portable charger to it, I can charge my phone right here. From right there on the side right there. Mike. Mine has it too. I forgot yeah. to talk about that. And these bags, both of these bags are linked in our Cruise Essential store. Once again, we got y'all. So if you want to have these carry-ons, feel free to go over there and check those out. And his has a lock. I don't know if you saw yeah, it. Yeah, I have a lock. lock. So it has a combination lock that you can use yeah, to, right there. Yeah. to lock it on up. Yep. We also have these packing mistakes over on our website, on our blog, which will be linked down in the description if mm -hmm. you want to check that out. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, you want to check out this video on the screen, packing tips for the first time cruiser. In this video, we will go through the whole entire packing process and show you exactly what you need to bring yep. on your first cruise so you can have a great time and not leave nothing at home. And we're going to catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace.